Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is currently viewed by many as the hottest property in Germany's rap scene. And here he is, Kasper. Glad to be here. Yeah, Thank glad to have much. you here. Great that you've come and joined us here on Talking Germany. Now, Kasper's latest CD hit number one in the German charts, and some critics have been describing he, he was just he looked very happy about the fact that it made number one. He's very happy too, I'm sure, about the fact that many critics have been describing him as an innovative new force in the German rap world. The question, though, is: Is he a rapper at all? Well, I'm certainly looking forward to talking to Kasper about how he defines himself and the following topics. Rap renewal. After spending the first 10 years of his childhood in the US, Benjamin Griffey, a.k.a. Casper, has brought something new and different to German rap. Absent father. An increasing number of young men here in Germany are growing up without a father in the house. We talk about the impact with Casper, who knows what it's like. And angry generation all over Europe. Young men and women are taking to the streets to vent their anger at their banks and their elders. So, Casper, first question, the big question, are you a rapper? I would consider myself a rapper uh. because I didn't just out of the blue just turn up and, you know, change, uh, switch to singing or do any sorts of tap dancing or <laughs> choreograph, choreograph tricks or anything. Yeah. I would still consider myself a rapper. It's just that the, the basis and the very core of the song switched. Yeah. Tell me about the basis and the core. What do you mean there? Well, rap is really rooted in funk and soul. And I guess because a lot of people that uh, started rap in the 80s, they grew up on funk and soul and Motown music and perhaps their mothers shaking their butts to that throughout the house. Uh -huh. I never had that. Uh -huh. um, I, I really um, grew up on a mixture of my father's records, my mother's records and my stepfather's records. And what were they listening to? Um, my father was was really into the whole Black Sabbath, uh, Ooh, <laughs> wow. Deep Purple, but you know, um, Joy Division, yeah. New Order as well. And my mother was really into the 80s uh, Madonna thing, and my yeah. stepfather listened to rap. Okay. And it's interesting that there's a, because, I mean, you are doing something different to an extent because you, you, you're rapping, but you've got, a, you've got a white band behind you. You've got, they're playing white boys music. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes, right. And you, uh, now, listen to this, 98.9% .9 of what people associate with rap is a load of rubbish. Who said that? Morsey. <laughs> you. <laughs> 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 but it is something Mother could have said. <laughs> Can you own up to it? Is that, I mean, it, the, a lot of rap is a load of rubbish, says Casper. I think why a lot of people can't relate to rap music is because a lot of rap nowadays doesn't tell stories. Oh. Like um, where I grew up in, in the rural area of, of, of Georgia is um, a lot of people listen to country music mm -hmm. and not because they liked the music so much, but because it would, um, it would tell a story. It would have a beginning and ending, a core meaning and everything. <laughs> and rap nowadays is a, well, the, I guess the American rap is a lot about, you know, gun toting, pistol whipping people, doing this, selling drugs and I don't sell drugs and I don't own pistols, so it doesn't really speak to me unless mm -hmm. I listen to it in an ironic way. Mm -hmm. um, and German rap is a lot about just rapping about how good you rap. Mm -hmm. Now imagine being 32 listening to the radio in your office and a song comes on and there's somebody rapping about how well he raps. That's just the most boring thing on earth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll pursue that in just a second because we've given. If you if you didn't at home already know who Casper is, you've already got your first impressions. Here now is more. Benjamin Griffey, stage name Casper, the German rapper is a new rising star on the country's hip hop scene. Fly. A rapper whose look, musical style, and lyrics are going in new directions. After the success of his latest album, expectations have risen. Casper spent time studying to be a teacher, 
Now he combines rap with rock and classic youth issues, identity, fear of loss, and rebellion against the adult world. It's not all rap about rap. There's also lots about emotions. That's just what his critics don't like. Opinions on the artist are split. Hip-hop fans celebrate him as an innovator. His detractors call him a would-be revolutionary and an emo rapper. Casper grew up in the U.S. until he was 11. After his parents separated, he returned to Germany with his mother and his sister. In his songs, he also works through topics such as his childhood without his American father. Young Benjamin was disappointed by the German rap scene at first, and he found rapping in German embarrassing. He preferred listening to rock or punk. But he found his way back to hip-hop through a successful appearance at a rap contest. Torn between middle-class life and his career as a rapper, the 28-year-old strikes a chord with many fans. He quickly made a name for himself on the music scene, and his second album, XOXO, brought him his breakthrough. And today, he's our guest on Talking Germany, Casper. You were laughing there when you were, th there's that scene, yeah, where you were in the big white shirt and you're doing all this and you're being sort of angry and shouting. What, 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 what were you laughing about? I was just, you know how you look at pictures of yourself when you were years younger? Uh -huh. That's, that's how it was. I was just so into the whole rap thing. And that's how, that's just all I wanted to be. And now just looking back at it, it's just neat. It's, it's not, I'm not embarrassed or anything. It's just, it's just neat to look at. It's like, why the hell am I wearing that? Why did I just say that? What was that all about? Why are there all these people? I've never seen them in my whole life. <laughs> okay, that was a couple of years ago. Let's go back even further. When, when, when was the, what's your first memory of sort of getting into rhymes and rhyming? Pretty much my first memories are really the, the cliche would be me performing Tone Loke songs or LL Cool J songs, which were great rappers in the yeah, late 80s. Yeah, yeah. I would just be performing them with like a brush in front of a mirror. And yeah. I, I really loved rap music. And, and th this was while you were still living in the US. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And then at age 11, your mother brought yeah. you and your sister back to Germany. Yes. You've lived for the first two weeks of your life in Germany before that. And your English was your language. It was your only language. Yes. That must have been a major culture shock for you. Well, at first, it didn't occur to us that, that, that we would be living in Germany now. So we were really, you know, holding back on the whole learning German deal. But as soon as we landed, we were at Frankfurt International Airport. Um, my mother would just start talking German to us, yeah. and we didn't understand why. And yeah. then it came to certain points, I think only years later, or months later, I would say, where we figured, okay, something's going on. We might not be going back to the States. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. And um, I think we picked up on, uh, on, on German so quick. It's because my mother and my grandmother were really extremely strict about it. They spoke German to you? Yeah. yeah, they made us set the table uh -huh. and um, name the things. Okay. Like um, for, for a plate, yeah. the German word is teller. Yeah. So we would have to you know, lay down the plate and just yeah. say teller. And if, if it would be the wrong thing, we'd have to clear the whole table and set it back up again. Okay. Little games like that. We were talking just a, a little bit about the significance of rap. And what does rap mean to German, to young German kids these days? I mean, it's, it's an American music style originally. And the whole rap look is something that comes straight out of US penitentiaries or US sports, <coughs> yeah? What does it mean to German kids? I think it means a lot to German kids that are looking for a group identity. And I think it's not so much about the music, but more about the behavior and the, the clanning up, I would say, the, the grouping up, you know having your homeboys and, you know, doing that. But right, right now, this, all of it's really interesting because there's a lot of German rap artists that are doing more individual stuff. And I think right now, 
as England already has, German rap is emancipating itself oh, yeah. and, 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 you know, becoming an own identity and uh, getting its own signature with it, with own stories and an own background. And we have our own heroes now. We didn't have oh, yeah. 10 years earlier. Okay. And um, I think it, it's, it's becoming more of a thing that it's not, it, it doesn't look like a, a mocking of anything anymore. It doesn't mm -hmm. look like a, a, a copying, an imitating, a, a, yeah. a walking cliche of anything. Oh, yeah. Very interesting. It is. That, it is. Very I encourage yeah. everybody to take a look at our. Okay. Listen to the world of German rap. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so as, we, as we've already seen, for various reasons, Casper's dad wasn't around much when he was growing up. And the absence of a father figure, say the experts at least, can have quite an effect. Uh, we got this report. Rafael Kusab never knew his father. Rafael came to Germany from Poland when he was six. His mother raised him and his brother on her own. Maybe he couldn't imagine himself as a father, or it scared him, or he didn't want to grow up. More and more boys in Germany are growing up without a father. Even though many specialists say fathers are particularly important for their son's development. The father is a role model, and boys want to be like their fathers and identify with them. Only in that way can they develop their own male identity. Torsten Gottschall didn't have that role model. He was six years old when his parents separated. A small boy who suddenly had to deal with the disappearance of his father, as did his elder brother. He has scarcely any memories of his father, but always felt the need to know more. Now 51, he's driven by the question of what makes a real man. I never learned how a man behaves in a relationship, how to maintain a good relationship with a woman. Dean Dawson also doesn't know to this day why his father left the family. A German rapper, he sings about the pain his father caused. He calls it family heartache. Writing a rap song about it was liberating for him. Dean's father was stationed in Germany with the US Army. At the early age of 19, he had a son. One day he said goodbye to his children and was gone, leaving no address. He left behind Dean, his younger sister and his German mother. My father was missing in situations when boys at a sensitive age simply need a father. Scientific studies have shown that among boys who get into trouble, the way Raphael Kusab once did, the absence of a father played a role. In the transition to the world of adulthood, fathers give their sons direction and support. And if that's lacking, adolescents are rudderless, and the identity crisis worsens. And they go off the rails. It often brings negative developments such as antisocial behavior, drug addiction, and even turning to crime. Raphael is now searching for his father. He wants to find him in Poland as soon as possible. He's heard he looks like his dad, that is around the same size and has the same hair color. I'd like to stand face to face with my father now and look him in the eye and ask him, just what kind of a man are you? Dean Dawson now has children of his own. The 33-year-old says he wants to do a better job of parenting than his father did and he intends to be there for his children. OK, Casper, some interesting impressions there, I think, about this whole story about fathers and sons. How important is it for a son to have a father in the house as a role model when you're growing up? I think it's really important. And I think I did have to learn things by myself that would have been... Well, not learn, just figure them out uh, yeah. by myself that would have been a lot easier having a, a, a father figure... 24-7 around me. It wasn't, my father wasn't really, even though we lived in different countries and it was very distant, we were still really close. Mm. But it, it just wasn't the same. And how did you communicate? Uh, via telephone. Telephone. Mm. Which was, must have been horrible phone bills. <laughs> but, <laughs> <Quite>. um, <laughs> yeah. And um, 
a different kind of communication is track 12, I think, <coughs> on your on uh, XOXO. That's a very special track, because that's for, about, with your father. Yes. Yeah? Um, we hadn't spoken that much in a while. I think we, we hadn't spoken about a year or so. Uh -huh. And um, then out of nothing, I, I, I was really thinking about calling up my father. He called me and asked if everything was okay. And I told him that I would just signed a major record deal and I'm working on that record and I'm having anxieties about it and really don't know if it'll work out. And I think I might <laughs> just by um, uh, canceling my, uh, my studies, yeah. I, I might have gone the wrong way. Oh, yeah. And then he, he, I think he wanted to go into a pep talk, I figured. And I was like, you know what, just record it any way you can, what you would say now, mm -hmm. and then just send that to me. Mm -hmm. And he did that. I didn't even listen to it. I just sent it straight. I just forwarded the, that email straight to my producer. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. he uh, laid the whole music under it. And the first time I heard it, it was... You were moved. It w yeah, I was moved. It was, it was really cliche. It was really, <laughs> it was really American cliche. But I, I, was, I was really, really moved by yeah, it. I can imagine. And tell me, you, I mean, your generation, you're a slightly different generation from me, yeah? What does your... This much. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to speculate. What, uh, what does your generation expect from men? What's your, what's, your, what's your idea of how a man should be? I think now, through the media, that, that there's a really wrong picture about uh, manhood circling these days, because... I think because the way the media is set up right now, that everything, uh, I think people have really short attention spans. So everything has to be spectacular within every four seconds or so. Mm -hmm. So it means movies have to have huge explosions or joke by joke by joke or um, huge scene after huge scene. And uh, same with, with music. Um, uh, within rap right now, it's the toughest record wins. So as soon as uh, uh, young men start idolizing that, they want to be that, yeah. which means Younger women think that's the ideal man because every man wants to be him. And this and that. I think it's a chain reaction to everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, while well, maybe um, in the '90s, maybe '80s, it was good to you know, um, you know, good song, "Dancing with Tears in My Eyes." <laughs> that, that was a, that was a, a really soft romantic song, and I think right now it's about a tough, strong songs. That's why I think my record full of soft, emotional songs. He's doing so well. He's doing so well. Struck, He's Casper has been distracting me here. I would like to hear what you have to say about it. I mean, there was a lot of stuff in that report about, yes. you know, about angry people out on the streets all over Europe. Uh, what's, are you an angry young man? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that I'm an angry young man. I wouldn't even say that I'm revolutionary in any sorts. And uh -huh. I'm, I'm not really into the whole today's news. Sadly, I should be. I yeah. should be, but I'm not. Yeah. I, I, but listen, you've, you've got a man, I mean, I've got to look at this here. You, your management company, as far as I understand, is actually called Beat the Rich. Do the yeah. rich deserve a beating? Well, it's a, it's a <laughs> wordplay. It's, it's, it's uh, because my manager's name, his name really is Beat. Yeah. So oh, it's, Beat, yeah. So it's, uh, it's uh, inspired by the movie name Beat the Rich, but it's also Beat the Rich. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Semi-funny, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> you don't quite want to commit yourself. Well, I mean, we were seeing some images of the riots in London earlier this year. Yeah, they were very serious. When you, when you and your buddies were watching that going on, what were you thinking? I think it's absolutely right to, to protest against uh, wrongheads. I, th I think it's absolutely right. Whether you have to, you know, set cars in flames, whether you have to, like, you know, loot stores and things like that. I'm not, sh I'm not saying that should be done. Yeah. But I do think that um, there's, a, there's a way with things that if, as, if it's not said really harsh, it's often not heard. Yeah. But okay. Uh, however, a lot of people from the UK listening to what you're saying now would be saying that these guys were... Uh, you've, got a, you've got a line on your record, yeah, which mm. goes, if I can remember rightly, um, before we beg... We will steal. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah, but but I, I was I was kind of brought up in that way. <laughs> I, I was I was I was brought up really, you know, be 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 proud, be do this, do yeah, the whole military shebang. I was yeah. I was brought up with that. Yeah. I was like always be really. 
proud, but I, I would not just wait for, for things to just happen. Yeah. Like, if, like it was this way, um, studying used to be free in Germany. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it, it, it cost a huge amount of money. I had, yeah. I had two jobs just to pay for my semesters, yeah. just for that. Yeah. And then yeah. it was a third job to pay my rent. Yeah. And um, I was feeling really, really angry and really mad at that because there was no obvious reason for that to happen. Yeah. And um, I, I, was, I was really in a... Uh, we, we, they tried to start something like a movement, let's go protest, but, and let's, but, but nobody joined. It, Nothing pro, happened. It's interesting listening to you talking about how you're, what your political ideas are, your political views and how politicised you are. I'd like to... It'd be interesting to know, uh, through your 20s, the last 10 years or so, there have been a, three German elections, national elections here in Germany. Have you voted in each of those elections? I have not. Ah. I have not. Which makes you a very typical part of your generation, I would guess. Yes. Yeah, Which also what... makes me a bad person. I think everybody yeah. should vote. Yeah. There's a lot of talk in Germany about this. This is, this is a reflection of the fact that people are disgruntled, that people are disillusioned with their politicians. Yeah. See, the thing is, and I, like I said before, I do not think it's a good thing, but I'm not really well educated. You're in, talking in political terms now. In political terms. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm dumb. I'm saying, I'm saying I'm a redneck. You're a bright guy. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. I just wouldn't know what to do, really. Okay. I'm not, I'm not that what, uh, what it's often put up as. I'm not this whole revolutionary... Um, you don't have the big message. You have the small message. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Now we're going to move very quickly to our quiz at the end of the show. Casper, uh, the Smiths and Springsteen or Kanye and Jay-Z? The Smiths and Springsteen. What a fine choice, sir. Yeah? Uh, one of your songs on your album is about, which I thought was very interesting, is about the bear and the hunter. Who do you identify with, the bear or the hunter? The bear. The bear. Another theme on your CD is uh, winners and losers. Are you a winner or a loser? I... I'm kind of on the fence there. Okay. I, I, I put myself in the middle, but if I had the choice, I would sit by the losers. Okay. Talking about politics, rebellion or compromise? Rebellion. Can rap change the world or is it just entertainment? Rap could change the world if oh. it was used wisely. If it was used wisely. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great guest, a great talker. That's the least you'd expect from a rapper. Casper was his name. Uh, if you've enjoyed his company as much as I have, then do come back next week. Until then, just bye-bye.